Apple's new 10th generation iPad is here, and while the 30% price increase over last year's model puts it in a very strange position in Apple's lineup, there are a few key reasons why I think it is worth that $450 price tag, but also why it isn't. Let's just talk about it. So as you can tell from the box, I got the yellow iPad and we now have multiple color options instead of just silver and gray. We now have silver, pink, blue, and yellow. And as far as the storage goes, we have the same 64 gig starting storage option, which is absurd in 2022 in my opinion, even for a base model, I feel like it should be 128. But nonetheless, we do also get 5G connectivity if you do go the cellular route. Inside the box, we have our pamphlet right here of information along with two large Apple stickers. And then we do have our USB-C outlet because we do have USB-C on this iPad now. And we have a braided USB-C to USB-C cable. So that is a nice addition here. And here's what that new yellow color looks like. And I really like it. It's kind of like a mustardy color. It's a very saturated look. It definitely catches your eye, which I like. And you can see on the borders as well, we have that same color all the way around. And even on the front of the iPad, you can still see the borders right there. So you're always gonna know which color you got, whether you're on the front or the back. Now, taking a look at the display, you can see that we now have no more home button. So we have a full screen design now, just like we do with every other iPad. So that's nice. And that does also give the screen a size of 10.9 inches, which is a solid increase from last year's 10.2 inch display, which of course had much bigger bezels and that home button down at the bottom. So instead of the home button, we now have the touch ID sensor on the power button up top or on the side if you put it in landscape mode. It's also now considered the liquid retina display, even though it has the same resolution, the same pixel density, and the same peak brightness as the previous iPads with the regular retina display. Now easily the biggest downside to this display is that it is not laminated. So the Apple Pencil is not going to be as immersive and feel as realistic as, you know, there's always gonna feel like there's something between the display and your fingertip or your pencil tip. So obviously not being laminated is a huge con, but that's kind of expected for the entry level iPad. And by the way, speaking of the Apple Pencil, this 10th generation iPad only works with the first generation Apple Pencil, not the second generation. And since we do have USB-C on this new iPad and the Apple Pencil first generation charges via lightning, you will need to get an Apple Pencil to USB-C adapter for $9. But on the checkout page, Apple does mention this and it also specifies that the Apple Pencil first gen now comes with that USB-C to Apple Pencil adapter. So if you're buying an Apple Pencil for the first time, it's going to come with that adapter for you. But if you already have an Apple Pencil, that adapter is going to cost an extra $9. We also now get Magic Keyboard Folio compatibility with this iPad, but it's $250, which makes no sense to me. I feel like this should have been like $150 to $200. I just think the Magic Keyboard is a must-have accessory for the iPad. I mean, I use it all the time, but for more than 50% of the price of the iPad itself, that's going to make it hard to justify for most people, especially right away. It may be something you get later down the road, but right away, that's a big cost associated with that. But anyways, getting back to the setup of this iPad, you can see we do have Touch ID on the home button, which is on the side if you are in landscape mode, which me personally, I'm in landscape mode like 95% of the time. So I'm going to most likely be using my left index finger right here for the Touch ID. So we're gonna go ahead and set this up. And Apple does prompt you to add another fingerprint as well when you're in portrait mode. So we're gonna do that. And then we get our Siri settings right here. So if you wanna set up Siri, you can do that like so. We're not going to improve Siri and dictation. Welcome to iPad, there we go. So that setup was very, very simple. And here we go, we are on our home screen of the iPad 10th generation. And instantly you can tell a nice difference from the previous iPad, because again, we do have that full screen display. It just feels much more modern in the hand. It is also a little bit lighter than that previous iPad. Now, as far as the performance goes, just overall performance, we do have that A14 chip. So that is compared to the A13 on the 9th gen. We do have the same six core CPU with two performance cores and four efficiency cores and the same four core GPU as the previous iPad. So games are not necessarily going to be any faster on this new 10th generation iPad. However, we do now have a 16 core neural engine compared to an eight core on the previous iPad. So the experience with, you know, all AI driven features and biometrics 
graphics will be improved. But unfortunately, none of that changes the battery life, so we're still going to get the same battery life as the previous ninth generation iPad. Now, it's not going to take very long using this iPad before you start to notice and really appreciate that Apple moved the front facing camera to the middle of the iPad display when you're in landscape mode. And this is probably my favorite feature of this new iPad. Even the iPad Pro doesn't have this. So I love this feature. And, you know, we do have the same specs as the previous iPad for that front facing camera, but we do now have Smart HDR3, which actually makes a decent difference in post image processing. These selfies actually turned out a lot better than I thought they would from a base model iPad. And if we turn our iPad around to the backside, we do also have an improved rear facing camera. So we have a 12 megapixel camera lens now compared to eight megapixels on the previous generation, along with an F 1.8 aperture compared to 2.4 previously. And I noticed that images do turn out better as well. But the big thing is that we can now also shoot in 4k video. So I know you guys all love to shoot video on your iPad. So now you can enjoy that with 4k quality. Now something else that a lot of people have glossed over that I really appreciate is the new speaker setup. So we now have landscape two speaker audio just like the new iPad Air, which I already know sounds much better than the previous generation iPad because on the previous gen iPad, I would always cover up the speakers when I'm in landscape mode and I would not be able to hear the audio near as well as I can on this new iPad 10th generation. And because this iPad comes with iPad OS 16, which by the way, it only comes with iPad OS 16. That is not the latest actual final build of iPad OS 16. If you go to your settings, a general software updates, right? Once you get this iPad, you will see that you will have a software update here for iPad OS 16.1, which is officially, you know, or, or essentially the final build of iPad OS 16. So you want to make sure to install that right away. But we do get things like the weather application along with several other new features and changes. Another little tidbit I wanted to mention is that I was noticing that my download speeds and just my overall browsing experience was faster than I expected. And then I remembered that this new iPad also has Wi-Fi 6 compatibility. So you can now have a faster Wi-Fi experience if you do have Wi-Fi 6 in your house. That's nice. And you also get Bluetooth 5.2. So that will also kind of future proof your purchase here as well compared to Bluetooth 4.2 that we had on the iPad 9th generation. So after using the iPad for a little while now, I have to say that it makes a lot more sense than I thought originally. So at first, obviously, before I had the iPad, I was just reading off of a spec sheet and I thought that $120 more than the ninth generation iPad just made no sense. But now my mind has kind of shifted because I think this is more comparable to the iPad Air and the iPad Pro. So at $150 less than the iPad Air and $350 less than the iPad Pro 11 inch, I think this iPad makes a lot of sense. However, that does beg the question of, is this iPad worth $120 more than the previous ninth generation iPad, which is still for sale by Apple. And you know, that's the iPad that everybody's going to be getting still for their kids because it's the cheapest option. It could get destroyed. So it makes sense if you have a kid, you know, if you're getting this for a kid or just for something to use other than your actual daily tablet, like a, you know, security monitor or whatever, obviously it makes sense to go for the ninth gen. However, for $120 more, you know, as, as using for your actual daily iPad, it makes a lot of sense to future proof your iPad and your purchase because you have USB C, you have the full screen, a much more modern display, you have Touch ID and the power button, you have Wi Fi 6 support. If you go the cellular route, you have you know 5G capabilities, you have the compatibility with the new Magic Keyboard, and all of that I think makes this easily worth $120 more than the iPad 9th generation. However, if you do use an Apple Pencil a lot and you know you would benefit from the Apple Pencil second generation feature. Features, I think the iPad Air is a better buy, especially if you can get one on sale. But even with all of that being said, it's still in a weird spot when you look at Apple's whole iPad lineup. I think that having several options is a good thing, but to the average consumer, it does complicate things. But to somebody who knows what they want and has done their research, this iPad is a great addition to the lineup, and I think it's actually going to sell quite well, especially with the new colorful options. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will have a more long-term review on this iPad 10 generation coming in the future. So if you want to see that, I would appreciate if you hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.